Good, uh, good morning everyone. Um, I hope everyone can hear me alright. Yep, good corners. Okay, my name is Will Rathaus. Um, whilst uh, working on my PhD in archaeology at Lampeter, uh, I also started working in mental health, initially with the student support services at the university and then subsequently with Mind Aberystwyth. Um, it got me working with people with developmental disorders, particularly autistic spectrum disorders and also uh, a range of mental health problems including depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, psychosis, to name but a few. Um, I found myself uh, becoming aware through news articles of uh, Dermot's uh, work on Operation Nightingale and when my chief executive Fiona Aldred uh, suggested using some of my archaeological expertise to help uh, our uh, service users, uh, I thought that was what she was referring to, but she was actually referring to another project by Mind Herefordshire uh, re relating to um, an Anglo-Saxon and medieval village at a place called Studmarsh. Now today I'm going to report on a project that I designed and undertook with members from Mind Aberystwyth as focusing on war memorials in Ceredigion. So, as I say, the inspirations for these were very much the past in mind by Mind Herefordshire. And if you want to know more about that, uh, Kate Lack over here has written a fantastic book on the subject. And also by Operation Nightingale and Defence Arch Archaeology Group set up by Sergeant Walsh. Um, following these, uh, we initially offered the chance to volunteer on digs for some of our service users uh, on a couple, of, a couple of digs, of which more in a little while. The rationale behind it is rooted in these six, soon to be eight, um, ideas of why this really, really ought to work. First of all, it's real work. Jennifer Creek, uh, in her textbook on occupational therapy for mental health, says that a good occupational therapy needs to be a purposeful activity and meaningful occupation. I take that to mean that it produces tangible results of real interest and utility to other people. If you think about it, um, low self-esteem seems to play a part in a vast number of different mental health problems. And by being able to produce something that people really want, people really value, that has got to be a great way of improving people's self-esteem. It absorbs the concentration. I doubt I have to tell many people in this room the degree of concentration, focused as you're traveling away on a trench. And of course, this echoes some of the mindfulness techniques that uh, mental health service users are taught uh, in therapy. For many people, simply being out of doors helps enormously. And if you get sunlight, that's great. Of course, being in Wales, uh, you can get a bit of wind and rain too, but it all helps. Exercise has been shown by study after study to improve people's mental health. Teamwork and social skills. Again, building self-confidence and self-esteem by interacting positively with other members of the team. And uh, interestingly, a study published by Dr. Chris Lowry of Bristol University has suggested that the Mycobacterium bacchae, bacteria found in soil, uh, secretes a chemical that helps to combat depression. Now to these, based on some of what we've already heard, I would also like to add to those, slightly retrospectively, that uh, the connection with pet place is going to be important. Um, with a lot of the projects we've heard about, and indeed with this, we're helping people to feel that connection with the place where we, where we live. And also to help to build a community. I suppose that comes in to some extent with the teamwork and social skills. So Mind Aberystwyth has existed for, I think it's somewhere in the region of uh, 12 to 15 years. An awful lot of the work we do is one-to-one -one, uh, support 
uh, on the basis of two contracts, one called Supporting People, funded by the Welsh Government, which is a short to medium term intervention, and also spot contracts. Now most of the people on spot contracts, this is a much longer term support package, uh, which is funded by the local authority, most of the people we support on that have an autistic spectrum disorder, but we're hoping, we're, we've been pushing very hard for people with serious mental health problems to be given spot contracts to help uh, provide long-term support, which is greatly needed. Uh, as you've already heard from other people presenting, there is a lot of pressure financially on provision of mental health services. But we've also done a lot of um, group activity. Uh, we run a number of arts and crafts groups. Uh, there is an autistic group that meets one evening a week and tends to involve a lot of sitting around playing board games and card games. And there's a woodland ecotherapy group which uh, I help to coordinate. As I said, uh, our chief executive recommended doing something archaeological and uh, inspired by Sergeant Walsh's uh, Operation Nightingale and by Mind uh, Herefordshire's Past the Mind project, we've uh, tried to run with this. We've taken people on a dig at Llanllir near Talsan, which is sort of between Lampeter and Aberystwyth. Uh, it's the remains of a, well, there's supposed to be a Cistercian nunnery there. We've yet to find it, but we did find a fantastic um, cobbled pavement area. Um, that was done over two years. The first year I wanted to do three days uh, work. We managed to do one and then we had some transport problems. Next year, however, we were a bit more successful and we managed to do a couple of days uh, there. Two of our members were involved in those uh, projects. Also, the year before last, no, last year, uh, we were involved in the uh, last uh, week of digging at Strata, Florida, in which four of our members came along over two days and uh, participated in that dig. So having done that, we wanted to do something that our members could really take ownership of much more. And so the War Memorials Project came about. Um, this was suggested um, by uh, a, a member of uh, David Archaeology Trust and uh, we've really run with it. The archaeological aims are to produce photographs and detailed records of war memorials in and around the county of Ceredigion so that should any of them, heaven forbid, be seriously damaged or destroyed, they could be repaired or replaced. We hope to provide data for online, in fact we have provided data for online databases including war memorials online and also the Imperial War Museum's database. Uh, one of the memorials on the IWM's database was the Aberystwyth Boathouse. On contacting the uh, ownership of it, uh, we were able to uh, verify that it was not a war memorial and never had been. So that's now been taken off their, their list. And we're also in the final stages of producing a written report which will be disseminated to local and national stakeholders, uh, particularly the National Library of Wales, the Royal Commission on Ancient Historic Monuments in Wales, uh, the uh, county uh, record uh, held by uh, David Archaeology Trust. Now, the mental health aims were to provide participants with an experience of archaeological survey work, through doing, hopefully to improve self-esteem, to assist with coping strategies, and to develop skills which may be of use in finding paid employment. A grant of £5,500 was secured from the Heritage Lottery Fund, and training began on the 28th of January 2017. The write-up we hope to finish by the end of next month. So the way it actually worked, we had two training days. The first, uh, I'd hoped to secure a lecture from uh, Dr. Lester Mason at the University of Wales in St. David. Unfortunately, he was ill on the day, so I had to give that presentation myself. Uh, the second day, we were very kindly joined by Menabel from uh, David Archaeology Trust, uh, who provided fieldwork training and recording. And uh, the picture on the left-hand side there is the um, Aberystwyth Town War Memorial. This is what might be described as the decent side. The other side uh, uh, portraying a rather voluptuous young woman in a state of, dis uh, of uh, undress. Um, 
the near photo there shows some of the writing up process. Uh, indeed, I've, I'm there with one of our service users who has discovered uh, an amazing talent for um, scale drawing, of which more in a little while. So, the analysis of the outcomes. We wanted to produce both quantitative and qualitative data. For the quantitative data, at the start and end of each session, participants were asked to complete the Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale form. Now, this was very much portrayed as being voluntary. We didn't want to be coercive in any way, shape or form. Uh, not everyone chose to do it. And indeed, on one or two days, uh, there were cases where no one felt inclined to do it. So there are a few gaps in the data. The qualitative data comes in the form of photographs of the uh, work undertaken. And the participants were asked to write a short report on the experience of the project and its impact on their mental health. They were particularly encouraged to be as critical as uh, they felt capable of being and also to uh, point out how things could be improved in the future. So the quantitative outcomes, we surveyed 43 different locations, three members of staff, myself as director and uh, two of my colleagues as support workers in case of any meltdowns or otherwise uh, uh, difficulties experienced by the participants. We also had a volunteer, Meg Ryder, from the National Library of Wales, and uh, eight people, eight service users participated uh, in the length of the course. On average, um, for the field work phase, uh, we've got a, an attendance of 1.38 person people, people on each day of field work, and within the whole project, 1.45. Now, the important thing, the value of the course, seven service users showed improvements, or, or there were, on seven days we registered an improvement, on one day no change, and on five days we registered deteriorations. Throughout the project, all but one actually had a final lower score than starting score, on average. Now, there's still further number crunching to be done on this. This is not a definitive thing. As you can see on the form, there are a number of different factors, feeling optimistic about the future, feeling relaxed, thinking clearly, etc, etc. So we may find when we look at those particular aspects, aspect by aspect, we may find more, inf more improvements. But so far, the quantitative data hasn't been particularly encouraging. I'm going to go through a few of the photographs now. This was uh, quite an early stage. <coughs> One of the first bits of field work we did after the training was in the county library. And on the left-hand side there, you can see one of the support workers and one of the uh, participants uh, looking at the Arduin School Memorial, which, when the school was closed down, was relocated to the library. In the top right-hand picture, uh, I'm interviewing the custodian of um, Creda Penai Hall in Bow Street, while Rhys, the uh, participant there, is recording the inscription on the plaque within the hall. The lady we interviewed, uh, I think her name was Kate, if I remember correctly, uh, was at pains to point out that the hall itself wasn't a memorial, but there was the memorial plaque there. The bottom photo shows one of our support workers and two of the participants um, examining a small war memorial which we think was moved from the local chapel when it closed down and reinstalled in the uh, wall on the edge of the lane in the village of Goginam. This is the memorial at Ustwith, Ustwith which is a very interesting shape with those uh, notches carved in the side. Uh, we've uh, speculated, and we're hoping to find some evidence to support or deny this, that this might have been intended originally to be a Celtic cross, and that the stone fractured and they decided to turn it into a simple monolith. In this photo you can see that uh, we were producing scale photographs, as well as recording the details. And by this set, stage of the project, this was uh, 
one on the right at, le at least was uh, on the, the last day of field work, we were able to very quickly sort of roll up to a location, uh, get the, the north arrow and the ranging pole in place to be able to produce quickly uh, photographs and get everything recorded in the hope of doing as many uh, memorials that day as we could. So the qualitative, um, the, the written qualitative elements were produced, uh, we, got, we got three in total. Two were particularly interesting. One was produced by a female participant aged about 40 who experienced psychosis, depression and severe paranoia. She attended one field work session and two write-up sessions and she wrote the first two paragraphs there. The lower two paragraphs were written by one of the most prolific and enthusiastic participants who attended 15 sessions, who has a, an autistic spectrum diagnosis as well as, as well as experiencing anxiety and depression. So the first person said that in the beginning she was nervous, she got worked up before coming to the sessions. She writes, I am more relaxed about it and being with everyone. My mixing skills still need improvement, but it's been good to be around other people. I have also enjoyed taking part in the typing up of a couple, couple of records I've done, but frustrated at my speed and general computer skills as these are declined badly now to what I used to be able to do and know. But in spite of this, I've enjoyed coming along and it's been nice to feel a little useful. I hope there is another project along these lines again I could maybe participate and contribute to in the future. Before going on these projects, I've never done anything like this or ever known much about archaeology, but I've discovered it does fascinate me a bit how much history can be found or discovered from a chip of stoneware or just a stone or a little plaque, age of things, etc. The other participant said, I found that the project really helped me in giving me a weekly goal to work towards, which has really helped anchor me during a time of un unemployment, anxiety and depression. I found my mood elevated after each session, spending time in the open air in good company being a very positive experience. In terms of how the project could be improved, I feel further outreaching to prospective participants would help. Many of those who joined us towards the end of the project express regret at, ha at having not come aboard sooner. <laughs> I feel there are others among Mind Avarice with clients who, were who would feel the same way. Further funding to extend the number of field trips we could take would also be beneficial. So with regard to that uh, particular aim of producing new skills, learning new skills. Uh, one of the outcomes I'm most proud of is the skill in producing uh, scale pictures. So on the left here we've got a uh, scale drawing of the site at uh, Goginan. On the right hand side is a picture that was created using software intended for controlling lathes for machining metal. I've forward copied, forwarded copies of these images to a contact who specialises in building recording, but have yet to hear back from them. I'm particularly impressed with that particular one. So, since this are the outcomes, oops, I've lost the page. The quantitative data really doesn't show much in the way of significant positive impact, but the qualitative data really does show positive value to the people who participated. So why do we have this disparity? I think one of the problems we've got is a small sample size. And it also needs to be borne in mind, especially with regards to outcomes across the length of the project. It wasn't a short, cohesive project. It was set out with many small activities over a space of uh, several months. So there were an awful lot of other life experiences affecting the mental well-being of participants. And therefore that particular data I would suggest is probably less significant. For future projects, definitely we want to have a larger participant sample. Uh, we want to have budget to not just uh, send out posters to uh, partner organisations as we did do for this project, but also to go out and visit, to try and rustle up interest and support in person, and also to have longer running field work. The projects we're looking at running in the future, I would dearly love in 2018 
to run another War Memorials project extending across David into Pembrokeshire and Carmarthenshire. I've already had contact with the director of uh, the mind organisations covering those areas. Um, it's also been suggested to me that we run a survey of vanishing rural infrastructure, particularly the milk collection platforms uh, laid out for collection by the milk marketing board. And the lead mine in Goginan, uh, which the Woodland Group has been using for a while, the owner there is very keen for us to do some excavation and maybe find out about the miners' cottages there. So there are a number of uh, issues there. So there's a, there's a few resources. Um, the main conclusion I want to draw from this is that the evidence collected has not strongly, the quantitative evidence has not strongly supported the efficacy of the work, but the qualitative uh, evidence is strongly supportive. I remain convinced that it is a very useful um, tool in supporting mental health, and I am therefore very keen to run future projects to test this idea. Thank you all very much for listening.